We all know we need to get exercise because it's good for our heart, for our lungs, for our muscles. Now we're discovering it may be good for our brains too. Physical aerobic exercise can change what turns out to be a huge range of different things in our brains, from mood to memory to attention to even possibly imagination. This is where all of the thinking takes place. Wendy Suzuki is studying how exercise can reshape the brain. This is where you're going to be in a few minutes, Carl. It may even help new neurons grow, a process called neurogenesis. We're only just starting to figure out what are the signals that go from muscle movement during your exercise to changes in the brain. You want to keep your heart rate monitor right here. I recently visited Suzuki's lab at New York University to learn more about her work and also volunteered to be put through my paces. All right, here we go. You and I only have two parts of the brain where new brain cells can be born. One is the hippocampus, important for memory, and the other is the olfactory bulb, important for smell. Exercise only enhances neurogenesis in the hippocampus. The hippocampus is a small region of the brain where we store memories. Everything from what we did yesterday to the floor plan of the house we grew up in. Growing new hippocampal cells may be good for our memory. I don't know about you, but I want as many new hippocampal cells as I can get. These new cells are kind of like teenagers. They're really excitable and they get involved in lots of memory circuits easily. They get engaged in memory better than the old cells. So do you think that people who get exercise, say, three times a week are going to be even better in terms of their brain performance? What we're going to see is improved ability to focus your attention after three months of, of this increased exercise. There are changes in neurotransmitter levels. All the neurotransmitters that decrease the, with depression, they're increased right after exercise. What we're trying to figure out is how long do you have to keep doing it so those effects do last, that does become your baseline. Suzuki is running experiments to see how exercise changes the brain's activity and our cognition. Feels all right? Okay, good. She has some of her volunteers run as hard as they can on a treadmill. You're going to run until you feel like you can't run anymore. And then she has them put on scalp electrodes and take tests on a computer. Suzuki mostly works with NYU students, and the stress many of them feel in college actually makes them the perfect test subjects for her research. So my hippocampus must be working overtime now, right? <laughs> yeah. Stress affects the hippocampus, and I think that's where we're going to see some of the biggest effects. Um, but we want to look at grades, we want to look at study habits, we want to look at neuro classic neuropsychological tests of all these different measures. If Suzuki and her colleagues can get enough of this hard data, she hopes that someday it will be possible to precisely tailor exercise plans for individuals in the same way a doctor might prescribe a patient a drug. Wouldn't you want to know for your age group and fitness level exactly how much, what kind, and how long you have to exercise to significantly improve your mood or your memory or your attention? I can imagine some people say, like, wow, can, can I just get a pill of that? And I don't have to bother with all <laughs> yeah. the sweaty yeah. gym clothes and yeah. all the rest of it. Yeah. Well, we're not quite there yet, but I like exercise, so I'm going to stick with exercise. It's, it's free.